not having it. So I gotta try to run Big Joe out and uh, get him out real quick. I don't see a whole lot going on here. Dunbar should stand down. He's smart. He already lost this summer once. All right, boys, let's behave. Be Dana White here in the middle. Come on, shoot. These younger ones are way more difficult to uh, manage. Let's get them and stare down. Hey guys, Dusty Becker, Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. We've got Cole right here, our man behind the camera, and Marissa's with us. And Maya, this is the Dunbar Hoss Herd. You guys saw the last video. We did something a little different. We did a old fashioned cattle drive basically. And we used the Polaris here to get this herd all the way up to the front. And uh, we end up pinning up the Big Joe herd as well. Big Joe herd is up at the front at the Ponderosa barn, pinned up because you know we can't have Dunbar and Big Joe getting into it. So. Next move, we are going to try to get the Dunbar herd up. They don't look too active. Some of them are, you know, they had a rough day yesterday uh, going on their drive, but um, we're gonna try to get them to follow us again with the ATV. We're gonna go up to the barn, and this is where we do our shenanigans of switching and moving around so that Big Joe and Dunbar don't go face to face. Can't touch nose to nose. So that's the idea here. That's what we're doing. We've gotta get them up get them caught and do a switcheroo. It's kind of hard to explain and you're like, Dusty, what are you even talking about? What are you doing? We'll show you, we'll give you a good idea. But we have to do all this because of two bulls basically. And that's why a lot of these problems are kind of forcing us to go to one herd, which is what we're working towards. But goal today is catch the entire herd. So we've got 24 in this herd. It's got our Wolverine females and our South Dakota females and then Haas and Dunbar and some that we raise too as well. I'm selling two females in the Oklahoma Bison Association sale. This December, I've got to get those two caught and then Dunbar and Haas as well. Here comes Dunbar right now. So we're gonna get some cubes, shake the bag, see if they'll follow us. Fifteen oh seven will fall, so we'll be okay. Come on, hey, I got them for you right here. Want to reverse the whole way? No, I'll eventually straighten out. Come on, fifteen oh seven. Sorry. Come on. I guess the other thing I didn't mention is the uh, Wolverine mama that lost her calf this summer, kind of in the heat, um, that we tried to rescue and get, bring up here and get claustrum in it. Uh, she's been pinned up with the Big Joe herd, and uh, this is going to be her opportunity to get, kind of get back to her family, which is the Dunbar Hoss herd and the rest of the Wolverine females. So. She gets to go back out with them today. Hopefully, if we get them caught, we'll see. Come on, kids! <laughs> you want some rocks? What's in there? There's rocks in here. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> Just a bag of rocks. You know you want it. Who put rocks in there to make noise? <laughs> oh, probably Kevin and Marshall. Maybe. See, she's kind of freaking out. 
This is the start of gate cutting. We're trying to reduce the herd size so that we can catch the animals that we want to catch. We can slowly get rid of the bulk of the animals to get them out and make it a safer situation so we can gate cut and catch the ones that we need to catch. When there's red dogs, it's a lot harder. Some of them are let out. It's Cole and Marissa, hopefully one of them shut the gate. I see Haas and Dunbar, but it looks like Big Joe and Dunbar are back together again, which is what we didn't want. But the good thing is, is we got these panels up right here. We're not dealing with fencing, we're dealing with just panels. And there out there, I can tell Dunbar learned his lesson this summer. Not having it, so I gotta try to run Big Joe out and uh, get him out real quick. I don't see a whole lot going on here. Dunbar should stand down, he's smart. He already lost this summer once. Let's see if I can run them out real quick. <coughs> All right, boys, let's behave. I'm gonna be Dana White here in the middle. Come on, shoot. He's gonna do a roll. That's gonna pee. He's gonna roll and mark his spot. All right, fellas. Joe with the stare down. All right, buddy, come on. Marissa, can you catch those? All right, so <laughs> what we just did was we were able to get the Dunbar herd and Haas herd followed us up here, got them in a pen that Marissa and I divided a couple weeks ago and got it ready for this situation. Uh, and then now I've got two left out here that I need to catch. So we've kind of moved the herd in here. We had some stragglers and we've moved them in this divided gate here. We've got feed to kind of distract them and keep Dunbar busy. Um, so now Big Joe is out here in what we call our trap and he looks like he's really busy. Um, he doesn't care about Dunbar right now. But uh, now that we got them in here, these stragglers in the back can see them and hopefully they come in. So it's really just all about being patient and having gates open and ready. But now we don't have to worry about these making a run for it. They can see them hopefully and get the two stragglers up. So that's the idea. But Big Joe and Dunbar got together. Um, 
you know, Shoulder Damas, each one did a roll, but uh, didn't see really any aggressive behavior. Plus, we're out of breeding season now, so it shouldn't be a shouldn't be a thing right now. But that didn't mean they're best friends right now either. <laughs> so next, we will gate cut if we can catch these two. It looks like Marissa's out there um, trying, but luckily I've help today from Marissa and Cole um, on this helping me shut gates and catch them and do this here and there. And next thing is we'll gate cut. I got to keep Dunbar and Haas. And then I want um, two other females that are going to be sold in our sale. And then and maybe a couple other female, females that may go in our breeding or a uh, production program over at Mom and Kevin's that we may take over there just to thin this herd a little bit. If you guys don't remember this summer, Dunbar got his eye hurt somehow out in the hay meadow. Gave him a shot of Jackson. And about two weeks later, we saw good signs from Dunbar's eye as it started to heal. Here you can see an up-close version of how far it's healed after two or three months since his injury. The blue feeder is a focal point here because it splits up two different lots. The bison know what's in it. So they always try to come up to it and it's a good attractant to try to pull them in so we can catch them and sort them. The reason I'm wanting to catch Dunbar and Haas as well as the two females I'm putting in the cell is because Haas and Dunbar had a very, very busy summer with breeding season. As the dominant bull, Dunbar had to defend off by keeping Haas away, which kept him very busy. As well as court the females that came in heat and hopefully bred them. And with the drought this summer, Haas and Dunbar had lost some weight, which sometimes happens with breed bulls. So, while Dunbar and Haas are kept up here in the front with the blue feeder, we're going to give them some grain feed that will hopefully help them gain some weight back during the winter. So as they're getting some good grain, get some protein, and some hopefully some good weight back on their bodies, they're also consuming our prairie native hay as well. Lots of love and special attention for our big guys. Forty five is one Marissa and I are working together now to try to gate cut all of the females to get them out of this pen. So we can just pin up Haas, Dunbar, the two females that we're going to sell. Gate cutting is not the easiest. The goal is to cut them off as they try to run out and keep the ones you want on the inside. Dunbar was occupied with the feed, but Haas wanted to run out. That's a typical Haas for you. I said, uh, these younger ones are way more difficult to uh, manage. Plus, they're just not used to being up here like the adults are. And teenagers? Yeah. 
Yeah, kind of. And uh, the one, the, one of the main ones that you want that's going in the sale um, is uh, sir is 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 one forty five, and she's the lead. Yeah. Okay, hold on. It's all right. It's all right. Walk that way, Marissa. All right, so we got some of the Dunbar Haas females from South Dakota and Canada separated. We're gonna let them go out here, join the Big Joe herd, balance this out. We're just slowly, slowly making the uh, groups smaller. Once we were able to catch the animals that we wanted to catch and the rest were separated and put into the trap, it was time to let them all out. At this point, the Dunbar and Haas females, along with Big Joe and his females, including Eleanor, make up the biggest herd that we've ever had at the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch, aka Ponderosa. It was time to let them out. Some of you may be wondering, why did you have to put them together? Well, at this point, it's not breeding season. And now with Dunbar and Haas pinned up in the front, and Big Joe by himself with all the females, we shouldn't have any issues. There was no reason why we couldn't bring the two herds together, as long as the bulls weren't in the same pasture together. The only real challenges that could be facing in this one giant herd are just female dominance and a new pecking order within the females. Separating the Wolverine females and the South Dakota females that were with the Dunbar and Haas herd won't be a problem. We can do that when it's time to work the animals. But right now, it's really not a big deal that they're all together. Now, it's a lot easier to rotate pastures as one big herd instead of having two separate ones. We're still in the process of fixing our lease property and get it really ready for our bison to take some over there. Our goal is still to cut this herd in half so that the Ponderosa property is easier to manage and achieve our regenerative ag goals to make this property even better for our bison. Don't go in that one place. That's where she's going to go. Yep. The one way they can't get out. <laughs> well, I left the gate open. I left the water running and I left the gate open. I went in to help Marissa with packages to ship off and uh, I forgot. And uh, three of them slipped through. We worked so hard to catch them. And uh, then I let them out. So uh, they're just in our trap. They haven't got out in the pasture on the road. But now uh, you know, we gotta get them back. So they've already done this like three times today. So usually if they've done that several times, they know where you're sending them. They're like, we ain't doing that again. So we'll see if these three ladies will do it. Hello, Those two are going the right spot. This one over here, I'm giving Dusty a hard time. 